Hi, my name is Shay Volstead, and uh, I'm a student here at the Northwest Woodworking Studio. I'm currently part of the Resident Mastery Program, uh, in which I dedicate nine months uh, to a full immersion program of, uh, of building different design projects and, and pieces around the shop uh, to really help just develop skills and ultimately develop a style uh, for, for furniture. Uh, I just completed my first project, and it was a sushi box, and uh, the premises of the box were supposed to be um, a box that was made of lap joints and uh, it had to be shaped. Uh, that was the only requirement necessary, so a lot of opportunity to, to grow and, and to really figure out what I wanted to do. Well, to start, I just started off by doing a lot of sketches, lots and lots of sketching to figure out uh, what it was that I found interesting, what it was that, that caught my eye, and ultimately uh, a design that I, I really liked. And, uh, and it was a difficult process because a lot of it was just figuring out do I want curves? Do I want straight edges? Uh, what is it that I, that I find fitting and what is it that I, that I find uh, attractive in my pieces? And so all of that said and done, I, I, I then was able to produce uh, this box and I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, the process obviously started off by uh, me milling all of my lumber, uh, my cherry and my walnut uh, to the proper sizes and, uh, and thicknesses um, and then cutting it all up and, and then beginning my, my joinery work. Um, as you can see here, uh, I decided to do a very long lap joint on the, on the top and a uh, smaller one on the sides and I thought that'd be great to, to kind of pull my, my design ideas of having these uh, sharp edges to, to be my shaping for the box. Um, the thing that I really learned was it's, it's difficult um, when you choose to have a lot of real estate to work with because it means more uh, chisel work and pairing to be done um, so that all of my edges can be nice and straight, um, that they can uh, not have any gaps, and really as the shaping process begins, I start cutting away at this, and so any bit that's showing uh, you know, can lead to gaps, and, and I felt like I was pretty successful uh, with taking on that endeavor. Um, I then proceeded with my, my lid, and this is cherry as well, and I did uh, kind of like a raised panel. Uh, I thought that those lines that are produced there uh, worked great with the rest of my box and and um, and kind of worked that out. Um, inside of my box I decided to do uh, dividers and I, I did route these out prior towards gluing up um, and I decided to create little dividers as well um, that signify kind of the same design being shown here on the on the legs and I just wanted things to be consistent and you to know that all of this flows. Um, from there, I, I glued up and, and well, from, from cutting the edges, I, I glued up and Gary wasn't joking when he said you need 12 clamps because um, every little bit of surface for gluing up needs to have pressure on it so that there aren't any gaps. Um, that, then from there, I went on to shape and, and, I, and I worked on these legs and these legs were something new to me too um, in which I had to kind of problem solve, how do I want to attach these legs and, and what do I want to achieve here and I think they came out pretty well. Uh, I just did a nice little miter joint on the edge so that uh, it kind of flowed throughout the box and I really came to find struggles at the, at the end with the handle um, because this is the piece that, that really I guess gives persona to the box and it's something that you gravitate towards and ultimately what you hold on to and I, and I played with this quite a bit, you know, I had a I had little curved replicas I made and, and just things to practice with and, and figure out. Um, and each process I took and I, I tried putting on my box to see, hey, how does this look? Um, ultimately, I came to this kind of geometric asymmetrical design that I thought uh, was really attractive and, and it flowed nicely with the box. And, and that's kind of uh, how I, I came to, to bring everything together. Uh, finally, I finished by uh, putting a nice little oil um, coat on the outside to really make the color pop and, and going through I think 10 or 12 coats of shellac uh, to really give a nice sheen and, and, and smooth finish. And so I'm overall really happy with it and it was a challenge and I look forward towards uh, my next project and moving forward. Thanks.